Michelle and this is my so-called handmade life. I have a blog by the same name and that is my name on Instagram. On Ravelry, I am Momatronic. You can respond to me here in the YouTube comments and give me any, you know, feedback to any of the things I talk about or answer any of the questions I ask in an episode and I will try and respond to you in the next episode. I'm trying to keep this as much like a conversation between crafters. So as though we were sitting and knitting or crocheting together and chatting. That is the feel I'm going for here. But this is episode 52. 51 is still not uploaded onto YouTube. I'm having a lot of trouble. My husband and I think we've pinpointed the problem with our internet connection. And so we're trying to tackle that. So you'll probably get 51 and 52 together. However, I just wanted to stay in the habit of making these. So I have no feedback to discuss in this episode, but that's okay, because I also have very little memory left on my SD card. So um, in the last episode, I talked about a few things about consumerism and crafting, and these issues are actually kind of old news. They were all hashed out about a year, year and a half ago, pretty thoroughly in the knitting community. I wasn't trying to pick at a scab with that. I just, you left a lot of thoughtful comments because I asked about it when it was really a topic of conversation. But so much time had passed, I didn't want you to think your thoughts meant nothing to me. So I did share some of your thoughts and some of mine on that topic. And yeah, it's kind of like we've all thought about it, but that is why I included it because your thoughts do matter to me. I don't feel like this is all about me talking. I really want it to be about you guys talking. So. Let's talk briefly, because of my memory card issues, about what I've got on. This is the Fisherman's Muse pattern by Albina McLaughlin. I don't know if you can see this lace pattern. This is kind of a funnel neck. Do you see it? <laughs> um, the lace pattern is not as distinct as it would be because I am using such a woolly wool. This, look at this halo. This is Newtoden in the With Seed colorway. So it's from years ago with Carolyn's uh, Newtoden brand. You know, their website and Instagram shop is Honer Oker. And she also has a personal Instagram, which I'll try and link. She had an image of her in this sweater. Albina has knit a lot with Carolyn's yarn. And hers had a bit of a shorter sleeve, so it's kind of a modern sleeve and a slightly boxier sleeve fit. Overall, she had more ease in her sweater, and that is what I was initially going for. But because I was using three strands of this pre-spun like Newtoden at once, it was tricky for me. And my gauge was not what I intended it to be. It was a little, it was less airy. Therefore, I have a more fitted garment, but I'm actually really pleased with that because with this contiguous uh, shoulder, I don't know if I would have liked it if it had turned out the size I wanted it to be. I have a feeling I would have gotten the shoulder off and it would have looked a little strange. So Carolyn's fit great with ease, but I don't know if I would have been able to manage that. So I'm actually really happy mine was to a tighter gauge. It's also incredibly warm. There's also the lace pattern on the bottom. Don't know if you can see it and it's an asymmetric hem. I'm sorry, I am so close to the camera. It's really hard to see, but you see I've got, you know, long enough sleeve. I can pull them down. I love this for hiking when it's windy and cold or riding my bike in the cold. Now, if I were to get a real sweat up here in Texas, I would have to peel this off. It's just never that cold. But for walking, in the winter, this would be great. And being such a woolly wool, kind of lopy like barrier, it would be great if it was kind of misting um, and humid also. So I'm so pleased with this. I've had it done for probably a year. I just haven't been online to show you guys. So. I'm really pleased with Albina's design. I really enjoyed the shoulder. I'd only done, you know, set in sleeves, afterthought sleeves, and of course, like a drop shoulder where you just pick up stitches and, you know, do the traditional decrease every inch or inch and a half. So this was 
neat. A lot of new things for me. Holding strands of Neutadin together. It was my first Neutadin project. I have a few more colorways of this yarn. I'm so excited to try. And of course, if you want pattern ideas for Neutadin, Albina actually has quite a few samples of her designs knit up in this yarn. So really, you could just go to town if you had. It, also, the Plutolope, it's very similar, that pre-spun effect. And uh, holding the three strands together, I don't know if I said this already because I've had to film this twice. <laughs> um, I would have to unwind each skein or cake a little bit then work for a few rounds and then do it again. You can't yank on this yarn. It's too delicate in that pre-spun state, but once it's knit together, it is strong. And of course it felt really well. So I'm very pleased with how this came out. Another design by Albina that I'm working on is the guilloche pullover. This was meant to be sort of a pre-knit it didn't have to be finished by the release date, which is a good thing because it's been released for a while and I'm not finished. She just wanted to get some projects in Ravelry. So it's really got quite a bit of ribbing border and a split edge here, split hem. And it looks really small here because it's not blocked out. As it blocks though, you see this honeycomb pattern. It's really great. So I am pretty much to where the sleeves will be. I might extend it just a little more because I know when I, whoops, when I pull, when I block it out, I might lose some of that length. So I might actually add a little more and then attach sleeves to body and finish the top of the sweater. I do have one sleeve finished and uh, <laughs> I need to get busy with this. I kind of took a break from it and I went and did some other things that didn't require my looking down as much because I didn't have a lot of time to just sit and look at knitting. And then I got out of the habit of reaching for this project. So I'm going to get back into it. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one. Another project I wanted to talk to you about was Dawn Barker's assigned pooling pattern. So You've seen these, they've been out for quite some time, but I haven't shown you what I did with that pattern. When I saw her mend pattern, which has the look of like mended jeans, kind of that sashiko, I think that's how you say it, um, Japanese stitching that a lot of people will mend denim with or uh, other cotton fabrics, I knew I wanted to make that. I did not want to buy more yarn though. And it would require maybe three or four new skeins. And of course her colorways for the assigned pooling patterns are incredible. But I was trying not to buy yarn at the time because I had recently moved and blah, I saw how much yarn I had and it was just wrong. So I um, dug up some Knit Picks Hawthorne in the pearl colorway. And I found it worked really well with this pattern maybe there's uh it's not quite as contrasty as the yarns that she was dyeing but you know she also encourages you to use those yarns in your stash that are variegated that would work well with these patterns so if you can see this linen stitch every time you hit the contrast light part it does have the look of Minda jeans and I love this shawl I like the ribbed border and I wasn't sure how this edge would do just being stockinette with no real slip stitch or any kind of treatment to keep it from rolling but it doesn't roll at all. Uh, I just trusted the pattern and it's great. Very um, voluminous is that the word? Uh, there's a lot to work with here like to wear several different ways or in a traditional shawl way. Um, so I used maybe three and a quarter skeins in Knit Picks, probably Hawthorne Sport from way back when they had Sport. I've had these in my stash a while. And then the leftover yarn I'm making shorty socks out of. So I'm really trying to make 
stuff out of my leftovers as soon as I finish a project. And I've been thinking about all my leftover sweater and shawl yarn, making socks that match so you can wear them together. I mean, why not? Rather than have a million little balls of yarn laying around. Another thing of Dawn's I wanted to show, well, actually, let me show you the yarn. I have a couple of other Knit Picks Hawthorne colorways that I thought might work with some of her assigned pooling patterns. And you can see, and she talks about it in detail on her Instagram, but just like maybe a quarter of this skein is the contrasting part. This isn't a super bright contrast, but I actually think I'm gonna like that. And these are like my favorite colors, greens and blues, like teal. I'm not sure if I want to do sprout or bloom. Is it bloom? I can't remember the pattern name. There's sprout and there's float. Float is really pretty and I have a yarn that might look good with that. It's like a little, like a flower stitch. And I thought, oh, that would look so cool in this colorway. But I also have Belmont in Sport, Hawthorne. No, no, this is Hawthorne Fingering. Actually, I have some in Fingering and some in Sport. Um, different dye lots, but I thought I could probably make them work for one of these larger shawls. Again, this is an older stash item, but the amount of contrast here like this contrasting part is like less than a quarter or about a quarter and I think it will work. And so it's a way for me to do her really cool uh, project without like breaking my spending a lot on yarn <laughs> um, resolve right now. Also, it's not that I'm all against spending money on yarn right now. It's just I really need to use what I have. And so if I have it, I want to use it. And I did find with this that some, I, I actually got one skein uh, de-stashed from someone on Ravelry. Or maybe it was this one. I think it was this one. Because I really did want to use mine in one of her larger shawl patterns. So that's one way to do it. If you're trying to make it work with your budget is to look for what you have, possibly find some on de-stash. But her colorways really are the best. <laughs> I encourage you to take a look at Barker Wool, the website, because they really are the perfect amount of everything for these patterns. And I noticed she has a sweater pattern out now. I don't know that the pattern's released because it wasn't on Ravelry today, but it's so awesome. This is another uh, Dawn Barker pattern I did. I may have shown you this when I was working on it like two years ago, but this is the Choya cowl and it looks like a Choya um, cactus skeleton. And I think I did show you a cactus skeleton I had found when I was in Central Texas, where I live now, visiting my daughter. We went hiking and I picked one up. This is really beautiful and held, it's her, DK weight in olivine held with lace weight mohair and olivine and that mohair just makes the whole thing feel so luxurious this would be a really nice gift for someone because it's not a huge time investment but it makes such an interesting and soft um just beautiful it just feels rich the the texture the color is so rich and beautiful this green is just gorgeous so you can see how uh, a sort of lace pattern is made with the DK and then you fill in knitting only with the lace weight here. And of course the light coming through, it's just really, I don't know, it's a really interesting knit. So it was fun all the way through. I think, yeah, I took a little class she did at Knitting in the Hills Retreat on getting started with this and, uh, it was nice to get to meet her, or get to spend more time with her, um, and hear some about her and her business, and then shop all her yarn. And some yarn that I bought there, I bought, I have quite a bit of her yarn. <laughs> but one thing I wanna do very soon, I'm, I'm working on two accessories 
one is almost done, I want to start her Traveler's Loop in the Joy and Violet Veil colorways. This is her Fern four ply fingering base. I just think these colors are great together. So that's coming. And uh, also, you know, some more of her assigned pooling projects. I know I'm, I think I'm really going to do those, both of those in these colorways to use that yarn. I just don't know what I would do with the yarn otherwise. I've never seen anything so interesting to use that type of variegated yarn. I, I just think her designs are really clever. So another thing I was working on last time we talked was the graduate scarf and here I am finished with it. This is Alexandra Tavel's graduate scarf in Hue and Me yarn, arrowwood and salt colorways. And you see how the reverse just looks like a regular garter stripe? You wouldn't think there's this slip stitch design with the checks on the other side, but it looks really cute when you're wrapped up and the reverse shows. I just think it's really cute, really cute design. Um, I used a little more than three skeins of each, but I stopped short. I didn't, I thought I would use all four to, I'm sorry, I used, uh, I had two skeins of each and I stopped with quite a bit left of each and I started a hat with the leftovers. So. I am doing Alexandra's Seafarer's cap, which I showed you uh, in the last episode. I'd already made two. I just decided to do a striped version of that. Sorry, I lost my stitches. Throwing everything around. And I'm just going to stripe randomly. I don't have as much of the arrowwood, so I will do more uh, salt and thinner stripes of arrowwood to the end. But this is about the length that it ends up. And of course, that leaves you room for extra ease at the top plus a fold over brim. So I'm just going to, you know, randomly stripe. I'm trying to use those leftovers as I come to them rather than putting them away in a little plastic sack waiting to remember to use them because I probably won't remember. So I talked to you in the last um, episode about have you ever unknit something or recycled a sweater that maybe you bought somewhere or thrifted or were given and used the yarn for something else. And I wanted to show you the one thing I remembered doing that with was the Black Swan sweater. It was a hollow knits design and it was by Tara Shade. And so it's like a a little shrug is what it is. So that was a way back. It's a little short shrug and it had a kind of a flip over collar that makes me think of 1985. Um, let's see, here's the back. It was just a, a tiny little thing to make and so I had a Target sweater that I took apart. Now I had extra yarn left and I made these headbands. I made one for my daughter and one for me. This is a Tara Lynn Morrison uh, pattern. I don't remember what it's called. Oh yeah. It's this pattern right here. This is from one of her books. Maybe her first book. Uh, Simcoe braided headband. That's what this is. And so, I don't know if it's showing very well in here and being black if the braid shows, but super warm. I would wear it out walking and I would wear it at my son's soccer games. This was kind of a, a thick and thin yarn. It was like a wool blend, but it worked really well. <laughs> Sorry, there's dog hair in here. It worked really well with this pattern and it was nice and warm, covered my ears. So that was something, those are two things I made with this yarn. I have unknit uh, a scarf, three scarves from PacSun. My daughter used to work at a PacSun and I would go in <laughs> and of course, you know, PacSun. Uh, I was getting a little older, like I was in my like 40s, early 40s, and shopping at Paxson was kind of fun because she would be like, we're having a sale, and I'd get there and like everything was size extra small and it looked like 
you know, not quite age appropriate for me. But it would be fun because I would still try it on and it would be a hoot. And my husband actually seriously wanted some jeans. He went and tried them on and he got like his regular size, but you know, they look totally painted on. I mean, we all laughed so hard. Plus he's really long legged. And so they were like way high water painted on jeans. It was just wrong. <laughs> but one thing I did get from her time at PacSun was I unknit some scarves and these are wool. I believe they're hundred percent wool and they're kind of like uh, roving. And I never did anything with them. And I was thinking of some Tara, Tara Lynn Morrison patterns. I also have this color, which I really love. This is like my, I'm into the greens, you guys. Isn't that pretty? I have two balls of it also. And I think they're actually a little more than the gray. So I have this yarn that's ready for recycling. If you guys want to do a knit along where we recycle some stuff, that would be a lot of fun. And I, I have patterns like that all of, I was thinking of Tara's book and so I have like all of her books here, but I was thinking of some of her accessories. So probably a hat, but there are like looped uh, cowls and things that might work also like her Lambton cowl. I might could use one of these colorways for that. Um, but that is a, I would say that's a super bulky yarn. Not sure what it's gonna do when washed, but anyway, would you guys be interested in doing a recycle, re-knit, reuse, knit along? Or crochet along, crochet too. Um, I was thinking of some things I would like to reuse, but not unknit. One was this lovely Road to Golden sweater. I'm not sure I will ever wear something this fitted. Like, I have, my size has changed since I knit this, but even if it hadn't, I just don't know if I'm super comfortable in fitted knitwear. Watch in a couple of years, that's all everyone will be making and I'll be doing it too. But it always just felt a little confining to me. So I thought, I don't want to undo it. This was my first Fair Isle knit. I love it so much. I thought of making a laptop cozy or an iPad cozy with it. <sighs> so I'm not quite sure what I would do, but if some of you have experience with that or are willing to take those steps with me in a make-along, I would be grateful. You would give me the noive to do it. Here's another one. I think it's called... <sighs> Edgewood. This was another, um, I think this is an Allison de Kaizen, uh, design and it was really great. And I won the yarn. I won this yarn. It was Clara <sighs> dirty water, dirty water dye works. And Clara was the colorway. This green is so great. I could unknit this, but it's not going to make a sweater that fits me now. I wore this in that hundreds whatever sweater episode and it was tight. I told you I wasn't comfortable in it. I don't want to undo it though because I kind of love it and I was wondering what I could do with this like as far as maybe just using the the stripes and I don't know if I could just kind of sew and do something with this stitch pattern here, I've got the stripes here, make some sort of accessory or again, iPad, laptop, cozy. So give me some ideas. Have you done something like that with old sweaters? Uh, they're sentimental. I just feel like if I were to give this away or donate this, it's not going to be used like it should be used. It's so beautiful. So give me some ideas if you have any. Tell me what you've unknit. Um, tell me what you're interested in trying to do with your uh, recycling, re-knit, reuse. And I know some of you, uh, one of my Instagram friends went through a period where they were constantly like old sweaters they didn't like quite the fit of or just weren't into anymore. They would unknit it and re-knit it and something else, which is pretty neat. Um, so. 
inspire me, please. And I hope that I've inspired some of you. Like this right here is the easiest thing to do right now in stores. All of the wool, uh, wool blend accessories, they're all going to be on sale. And this was all of these balls. So this like, <laughs> so my sack, this is like four big balls, maybe $4, maybe 10 maybe 10 for all of it, but I feel like I paid a dollar per scarf. Maybe it was $3 a scarf. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you can't beat that for wool to work with. It's really pretty. So anyway, give me some ideas for things to make or other totally different ways to reuse, recycle, re-knit your knits. Um, I hope you guys have a good week. Let me see if I talked about everything. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you guys, <gasps> the last book in the Expanse series is out. I've just started it. Don't spoil anything for me because I keep falling asleep before getting through the first chapter. I'm very excited about this. And it's like, they know, because like they dedicated it. They say, nine books later and you're still here. So this one's for you. Guys, this is my favorite book series ever of all the things I've read. And I know there are more monumental books out there and there's the classics and this and that, but something about this sci-fi people stuck on planets and ships together as a device for working out, you know, the human condition has always been interesting to me since I was a kid. And this is just great. The dialogue is so good in these books. I don't even know how they're going to wrap this up in one book. They always blow my mind. So, recommendation. And then I found this for $1.50 at a book warehouse. It's called Luke and Forest. It's by Donna Damar. Damari. This is, look at the real, isn't this sweet? So I'm thinking actually of a couple of you who are Instagram friends of mine that may not watch the podcast but you so love your dogs and uh, one of you, you know, takes in senior dogs and that's the kind of dogs you adopt. This book is all photo, uh, like a photo journal of her, these dogs lives with her from the time they're little puppies to past their passing. And it, you know, the title is Luke and Forest, My Savior's My Salvation. And basically she's going through a time of brokenness in her life. And in the last episode, you know, it's titled Hopeful. And I talked about how a lot of us had some brokenness and we're hopeful for our future. And I'm hopeful for what's happening in your lives and where it's going. And you know who you are. Those that I talked to on the episode or just in private. Um, so it just made me think of like, I don't know, her healing process, the healing process that, you know, I've was on for a while and several of you are probably in the middle of and uh you know that last episode was called hopeful that sweater was designed in a time of hope needing something to hope in and then for me it was knit in a time where i was very hopeful uh, for this new beginning that my husband and i were starting here it's not just a new home new neighborhood hopefully cleaner environment we're also working on some things in our marriage that we have not really, we've pushed to the side, not really tended to, just trying to make it a better quality of relationship. So that's been really wonderful. It, it's been a good thing. Anyway, uh, this is kind of meaning there's some tragedy here, but I don't know. I just liked that redemptive healing nature of the story and of course dog pictures, you know. I love them so much because they make me think of my dogs and just the way we go on walks together. My husband and I took our dogs yesterday. We're trying to let Spot walk some more even though he's getting older. Um, we're trying to let him walk on trails more because he loves it and he likes to be our little leader. He's a little working dog at heart. So I'm just keeping an eye on his joints. I mean, he's taking medicine for joint stuff and pain, but I hate leaving him behind for that. Anyway, there's just a real 
a lot of healing takes place in a lot of people's lives through dogs. So I hope you guys have a good week. I'm almost out of memory card. Uh, let me know about in the long re-knit, recycle, remake, ah, I don't know what I'll call it. If you're interested in doing that or if you have some things and you don't have to knit, you don't have to crochet, you could be sewing something you previously knit, making macrame, I don't know. Just let me know what you're thinking and uh, I hope I get this out soon.